Thank you, Linda, so much for taking a few moments, a few minutes to, to share your person with us because uh, I really wanted to, to show to Polish people who watch me already on my YouTube channel who you are and I really wanted to, I really want to ask you a few questions because I really love the way you talk about tea touch and I still learn, you know, to talk the way you are. <laughs> you do it. So the first question I have is what makes tea touch so different from other bodywork techniques? I think, I think one of the things that makes it um, really learnable is the fact that we have specific method of doing the pressure and the tempo and the various parts of the hand that we use and um, the fact that you have this logical left brain approach that really helps all the people who have basically learned left brain. And that's, that's most of us. Mm -hmm. So you have something to, to latch on to, you know? What is, that tip, what is the pressure of a one? We can actually feel that. What's the pressure of a three? And when do we use these yes. and why? And so the, the logical part is really, for me, um, what makes it very teachable. The aspect on the other side, this concept of knowing the intuitive part, that's also an important part. And because we have this one and a quarter circles and we visual we bring in visualization in the movement and the visualizing one and a quarter circle, which is really a spiral. Yes. That's what took me <laughs> so many years to, many, many years to come to is that that spiral movement, that visualizing that claw, mm -hmm. and visualizing the animals that fit the parts of the hand. The clouded leopard, mm -hmm. you know, the lion leopard, the raccoon touch, yes. the, the baby chimp, all these different parts. That brings in the right brain, feeling, creativity, compassion, and this concept of intuition mm -hmm. and so we learn it's like learning the scales uh, when you want to play a piano you learn the scales and then you just allow your hands to find the places that the animal you're working on likes. yes that's right and, it, and I really like I got touched by what you you said during the training how important it is to to, to have this positive picture of what you want your animal to like the be like concept like of holding uh, and and what's important is not that we fixate on how we want them but uh, yeah that we, exactly the keywords are the infinite possibilities mm -hmm. for change and that comes from quantum science mm -hmm. this concept that everything is in change and when we realize that and we have all these different nine various way elements that belong to how you do tea touch and we have like more than 20 different parts of the hands that we use so we're constantly activating this right brain you know, intuition mm -hmm. feeling creativity and compassion and then combined with the left brain logic and that's what makes it you know teachable and that, that we pay attention to the feedback of our animals yes this is oh, this is so amazing, and it's very important that you you're talking about logical parts because very often I hear that mm -hmm. people don't really believe that because it looks like mm -hmm. magic. Yeah. So could you maybe talk a little bit about about science behind it? Like why does tea touch work? Yeah. Now the the first science that we ever had mm -hmm. was actually done by uh, Cecilia Wendler mm -hmm. on 160 soldiers who were yeah. fearful of injections. Wow. And she did it at the University of Wisconsin, her PhD. Mm -hmm. And in order to do this study on 160 soldiers getting injections, um, somebody who didn't know tea touch had to simply do three minutes, which is a long time, because you would have gotten the same actually result from one minute. Mm -hmm. Just moving the tissue around the place of injection mm -hmm. for three minutes. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And then take the before and after pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. 
like at the thought of getting this injection, and then after uh -huh. three minutes of T-Touch, and then getting the injection, and having a significant reduction in blood pressure, pulse, and respiration in those fearful soldiers. And that was the basis of her PhD, and, and you can see it on our website, ttouch.com. Oh, you great. can go under studies and see that, because that was the first time that we had a significant change. And then we did another study in Vienna with um, 58 people getting 20 minutes only of t touch mm -hmm. And what we found is that the significance in the sense of well-being, mm -hmm. and we only did like 20 minutes, we used only five possible t touches okay. with a pressure of one to five instead okay. of one to 10. And we got, again, this, such a significant change in the level of well-being that the people who were reading the study after and evaluating it thought that we must have paid the people to take it. That's really? how significant that was. Yeah. Yeah. But just from, the, and it's really important when you're wanting to do this work for your animals that you, you do it for yourself. That's one of the beauties you can reduce pain or fear in yourself with these various one and a quarter circles. This is amazing because we should always start with ourselves, right? right. Before we we start working on our animals. Well, we give a whole lot. We have a much better sense of why do they respond in the way they do. Exactly. Yeah. And here comes another question which I have uh, because I got like I'm fascinated with the research uh, HeartMath did right. about heart coherence. Right. coherence. It's fascinating. So, like, what did they discover? Like, what exactly did they well, discover? Well, what, what heart math is only, there are only two studies, one for mm -hmm. horses and one for dogs. Okay. Dog, because uh, although uh, Rolla McCready would like to do more, because <laughs> he loves animals and grew up on the farm, um, their, their basic is interest in, in, in humans. In humans, dogs, but yes. His son, they did a study with his son with their dog and found that when he was in a place of like like irritation or unhappiness, that the dog, he was not in heart coherence and the dog got up and left. And when he was thinking positive thoughts and um, paying attention to his breathing, that when he was in heart coherence, and you can just Google heart coherence with heart math institute and find out what that means. Mm -hmm. It's a place of really calm peace for us. The animals wanted to be with the person in heart. This is amazing, really. Well, it's important that we become grounded, you know, can pay attention, learn to breathe. So because normally if you do anything when you're practicing something in the beginning, our human tendency is to hold the breath. Yes. And as long as you hold your breath, you can't be in heart coherence. No, exactly, exactly. And then I think that you really want to fix your animal. Right. It's like, it also yeah. doesn't help, right? And fixing, wanting to fix the desire, the intent to fix, yes. will mean that you're not in heart coherence. Oh, that's not the <laughs> that's thing. Part of it. Exactly. And you just, there's too much like, Direct intention. Exactly. Oh. And it's amazing like how T Touch uh, is like the, the, how this method is growing and now more and more people benefit from it, right? It's like there's also some uh, like research done on it, and, like people with Alzheimer and. Well, the, and we have not done research. Okay, okay so it's. We've had many case studies. I see, so it's. I mean, we have. Research. The research is what I told you about, mm. some of it. But the case studies that we have with Alzheimer's and dementia uh, is really significant, showing that the person who had for years hadn't been able to be still, really agitated, and just a few mm -hmm. tea touches as the person is moving, walking, uh -huh. would get this ah, uh, a smile. Stop sometimes and be able to feel and very different connection. Mm. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. An ability to, to be in a place of peace and yes. stay present. That's so important. Such an important part of this work. That's what I discovered myself too. <laughs> and um, this is maybe like a bit different question, but I'm really curious. Like, how do you feel as a person who has Im impacted so many people and animals? Like, do you really like? Um, how do you feel? I'm just really curious. Well, I think it's that that's one reason that I live in a place of gratitude. Because 
I mean, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I've just like listened, shown up when my publishers ask me to write, you know, to produce a book because I have like 22 books out in 15 languages. But it's not like I've reached out to do it. It's always the, the publisher who wants it. And so how I feel is incredible gratitude. You know, I just, I don't feel, <laughs> I just listened and brought this through and shared it. Yes. And that's my interest. Oh. So it's very grateful. Oh, yeah, amazing. We are all grateful for that. <laughs> and I also wanted to, to say congratulations for receiving Torch Bearer Award. Yeah, I forgot to bring it today. Uh, I, I, I hope that you would Darn, have it. I but, but it's it's amazing. Like, uh, can you talk a little bit more about it? Because wow, it was well. Um, nice. the, the Peace Run organization, yes. International, Peace Run, is um, a, they have this medal that's called yes. the Torch Bearer mm -hmm. Award, and it's given to people who have made some significant impact on the planet. Um, in the terms of finding that peace within. And uh, it was started by this amazing man, Sri Chinmoy, yes. like 30 years ago, the organization had stopped, started. And it was, and he, they started like with running with a torch uh -huh. for inner peace and for, for oneness. This concept of a promise for oneness from all cultures, from all races, all religions. And it, what is just so incredible is that torch bearer, people carrying, running, the, running with the torch mm -hmm. for the inner peace, have been now in 155 countries over the 30 years. They've run with the torch um, 600,000 kilometers, and they have been in 25,000 plus schools. <laughs> in this 155 wow. country. Amazing. Yeah, it's really amazing. And when I first was asked if I would accept it, uh, when it was a, a prize for peace from this organization, I'd never heard of it. And I thought, it doesn't make sense to me. I don't see peace on the planet. Mm -hmm. And then I was told, ah, but it's for inner peace. Mm. That I can do. That can and do. that's what this work is about, telling to T-Touch, is about bring an animal or a person to that place of inner peace and safety. And so it was an incredible honor for me because, you know, people like um, Gorbachev and Mother Teresa and Prince, uh, I'm not Prince, but rather uh, Pope Francis, these are, are some, of the, uh, some of the people um, who, and some of the athletes, big athletes who are also activists for peace have received it. And it can be given to, you know, any person who makes a difference who's nominated. They have a nomination each year. Amazing. And so I received it in Vienna this year. Wow. And um, it was a huge, huge award. And I usually, I was going to wear it today and I, I forgot to bring it for you. And actually, that's the last thing because I don't want to keep you too long. So I love the the um, like the message. Uh, I don't remember if it's put on the website, but uh, this uh, this vision, changing the world one tea touch at a time. What do you understand for that? <coughs> what I understand for that is when we come to recognize that this concept that every cell is a genius. It's the it's the merging of science and spirituality. And when you look at the work of, I was first inspired by Sir Charles Sherrington mm -hmm. in his book, Man on His Nature. He's an amazing British researcher. Mm -hmm. And he said that this is what in, totally inspired me with work on the body was this concept. And I was in the Feld four-year Feldenkrais training at the time at the Humanistic Psychology Institute with Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. And that was one of the books was Man on His Nature that we were meant to ask to read. And when, when Sir Charles Sherrington made the statement that every cell in the body knows its function within the body, I thought, hmm, that's really easy when I don't yeah. yet know how to do this amazing Feldenkrais work because we were only in our, after the first year yes. of training. All I have to do is just talk to my cells and say with these, these cells, now remember your potential for ideal function. Mm. Hmm. 
I can do all that. Right? And that's how I became interested in the self. And then I kept searching for this idea, wait a minute, like, what does that mean? Every cell has its function. Exactly. And then I, I read Spontaneous Evolution by uh, uh, Bruce Lipton and listened to some of his tapes and had the great honor of actually co-teaching um, an afternoon workshop with him in Vienna um, five years ago. And it was, it's incredible when you, when you read this concept from Bruce Lipton that every cell know, has a communication, a connection with all other cells in the body. Hmm. That's really interesting. So what is this? Are you talking to the cells? Because this is what I got. This, this kept coming to me intuitively. Wow. The intention behind T-Touch is just supporting the function between the cells. And when I met about 2006 with Dr. Fritz Albert Pop in his Institute for uh, the Institute for um, an International Institute for Biophysics mm -hmm. in Germany, um, and I did like three tea touches on his shoulder just to talk to him about um, show him that I had experienced hmm, a different light in the cells of a horse who'd been badly injured with a pole running into it. And I found that when I did very gentle work around the area that where there was fear, or didn't, the animal didn't want to be touched, that it's as though the light in the cells changed. Now, you have to understand, I don't see things like that. Mm -hmm. I want to do, only do what a child can do, which is true, what we can do with of these course. one in a quarter circle. Oh. So, um, when, I, when, I sh when I showed this to Dr. Pop, and just did a few touches on him, he said, ah, the light in the cells that he has been studying for many, many, many years um, represents the communication between the cells. And that's what these spiral touches, really spiral, actually activate is that connection or communication or ideal function between the cells. So amazing. And the, the beautiful thing is, you don't have to know that in mm -hmm. order to make it successful. Exactly. Because it's like a homeopathic attention mm -hmm. between, every, between every circle and a quarter. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linda. I just love the way you, you talk try about it. it. Yes, that's try it. Point. Join us. <laughs> Join yeah. us in this yes. wonderful community. Changing. Changing its concept, changing the world one tea touch at a time. Exactly. As we recognize the divine spark, that's what's behind it all, and that's now scientifically proven. Good to know, yeah, to understand why it is working, right? Exactly. Yes. And that's why I love this whole concept of tea touch. It's, it's both yeah. activates both knowledge and knowing, left and right hemispheres, yes. science and spirituality. Exactly. And you don't have to know any of that to be successful just with the technique. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Enjoy. you so much, Linda. <laughs> Wonderful.